Hi everyone, today we're going to show you how to make a awesome prop shield using materials from Smoothon Incorporated. So check it out. I'm going to begin by hot gluing a resin shield model onto a large melanine board. I'm going to apply the hot glue onto the edge of the shield and then press it firmly against the baseboard to secure the model. The mold material we're going to use is Rebound 25. This is part A and part B. Rebound 25 is a platinum cure silicone rubber. It's very, very easy to work with. Now, before you work with any material, it's very, very important that you premix. So we're going to premix part A using a clean mixing stick. We're going to stir the material, making sure to scrape the sides and the bottom as we go to give it a thorough premix. Now we're going to do the same thing for part B. Again, use a clean mixing stick and stir the material to give it a thorough premix. Scrape the sides and the bottom as you do this. All right, so we're going to begin by pouring part A into a clean mixing container. And we're going to then dispense part B also in a clean mixing container. Now the mix ratio for rebound 25 is 1 to 1 by volume, so equal volume of A and equal volume of B. Now we're going to dispense the part A into a clean mixing container. And we're going to do the same to part B, adding that to part A. And once A and B touch, that's when the pot life begins. You've got 20 minutes of pot life with this material. You want to mix to a clean, consistent color, no white streaks. Once you've got a uniform color, you're going to put that entire mixture into a brand new mixing container, and you're going to repeat the process. This is called double mixing and pouring, and I use this all the time. You'd be amazed how well this works to ensure you get a good mix. Now we're going to stipple silicone material right onto the model surface to create our first layer. By stippling, we compress the air off the surface, minimizing bubbles. And more importantly, we help to create a very, very thin coat, which is important to capture all of that fine detail off of our model. When I get down to the base of the model, I'm going to also create a flange. For the flange, we just need to brush the material on. And here is our first layer a nice thin coat uh, of material on a model. Now for our second layer, we're going to color this layer using Silpig Red. I'm going to mix this into part B and then mix my materials to create my second layer. Now that we have our, our material ready, we're going to brush this material to create our second layer. Uh, the coloring is going to help me uh, determine how much coverage I have and where I need to go to create my second layer. For this layer and for every subsequent layer in this project, we're just going to brush. No stippling required. And here is our second layer. Notice that it is now uh, a different color and we have good coverage across the surface of our model. At this point I'm going to make registration keys. I mixed up material, I'm going to pour it into these little uh, one ounce cups to create little nubs for registration. I also have these metal strips that I'm going to pour a silicone into to create long silicone strips. These registration keys will help me uh, register my mold rubber to my support shell later in the process. Now for layer number three, we're going to add a material called Thyvex. It only takes a few drops of material to significantly thicken the silicone. This is important. Thickened silicone will help me cover all my undercuts and drafts in my model. So I'm going to mix this material into my mixture to create my third layer. You want to mix until you get a nice thick consistency and you can notice here it's pretty thick in consistency. Now I'm going to take my thickened silicone and I'm going to use this to cover all of my undercuts in my model. So particularly in areas where I know I'm going to need thicker silicone 
to prevent mechanical lock of my mold rubber to my support shell. So here is our third layer complete. Notice how all of the undercuts have been covered with thickened silicone. At this point, we're going to add our registration keys to our mold rubber. We want to apply this when the, the last layer that we applied is still tacky to get a really good bond. Um, and basically what we're going to do is we're just going to um, apply these keys in, in areas around the uh, mold rubber to create registration areas for the mold rubber to register properly to the shell. This will prevent any movement of the rubber in the support shell as we cast into it. Here are my long strips. And again, I'm gonna use this to uh, add registration. You can never have enough registration keys in a, in a mold rubber. The more registration keys you have, the better it will fit within your support shell and prevent any kind of unwanted movement when you're casting. For the next layer, I colored the material using Silpig Blue. This will be our fourth and final layer for our mold rubber. So here is our final layer applied and the mold rubber is, is all set. We're going to let this cure overnight. Once our mold rubber is cured up, uh, we're going to trim the flange. And what I'm going to do, again, to help with registration, I'm going to cut uh, in an undulating curved uh, pattern along the edge of the rubber to trim the flange. Now we're going to apply some Sonite wax to our mold rubber. Sonite wax is a paste wax. Uh, and using a clean brush, I'm going to apply this directly to the surface of my mold rubber on all, all the way across the entire surface of our mold rubber. And I'm also going to apply it to the baseboard so that the support shell will release from the mold rubber as well as the baseboard easily. Now for my support shell material, I chose a two-part epoxy putty called Freeform Air. This is part A, and this is part B. Now this epoxy putty uh, is a material that you mix by hand. Part A is a white colored material. Looks like this. Part B is a gray colored material. The mix ratio is one to one by volume. Um, and both part A and part B are is very, very soft in consistency, which I like. It's easy to work with from that perspective. You want to mix part A and part B by hand thoroughly. You want to check it and make sure there are no white streaks when you're mixing the material. You want to keep working the material, folding it in in itself until you get a nice uniform light gray color. Like this. Now we're going to apply our epoxy putty directly onto the surface of our rubber to create our support shell. And we're going to mix up material as needed to cover the entire surface of our mold rubber to create the support shell. The advantage to freeform air is that the, the support shell that you create with this material is going to be very, very lightweight. And that's very convenient, especially if you're working with something as large as a full-size shield. At this point, I'm going to take a little bit of water and I'm going to smooth the surface out of the, on the epoxy. Just a little bit of water. You don't need a lot. Um, and by doing this, you get a nice smooth surface on your support shell. So here is the first part of our shell with the freeform air applied to the entire area of our mold rubber. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply uh, some of our Sonite wax to the surface of a flat melanine board. And I'm going to use this as a leveling tool. 
So now I'm going to apply some additional freeform air to build a base on the support shell. The purpose of this base is to uh, make it nice and level. Uh, I'm going to use the board that we waxed earlier to uh, make sure that the base is nice and level. And now here is our support shell uh, with the base and it's all ready to go. I'm going to let that cure up. Now we're going to demold our shell from the baseboard. I'm going to use a chisel and hammer to do this. You just want to basically work your way around the edge of the support shell, uh, lightly tapping the uh, chisel into the base of the support shell and working it off the surface. And it should release right from the baseboard very easily. Alright, then we're going to go ahead and remove the mold rubber from the support shell. All right. Now we're going to demold our original model from our silicone rubber. Take your time when you do this and allow for the silicone to release from the surface of your model. And as you can see, the Rebound 25 captures all of that detail perfectly. Now I've reseated the rubber into the shell and now it's ready for casting.